here for this uh, Hayflick lecture. I know personally uh, Hayflick, and uh, I was inviting him in, uh, when I was professor in Modena, and I appreciated that I am in a very good company with uh, Tom Johnson, John Ve Jan Weg, uh, uh, Alan Richardson, all people that uh, I know very well. And uh, it's a great pleasure to be here in this uh, university. Uh, as an immunologist, I appreciated that there is a very strong school on immunology, uh, dating back to uh, when here there was a very great uh, uh, guys uh, working on, uh, on uh, B cells, Max Cooper. Unfortunately, at that time, I, I was working on T cells. So this is probably the reason why I didn't came here earlier. But, uh, is famous all over the world, and this continues to be, to be very, very appreciated. So I would like to thank uh, John uh, for this invitation and all the other people here at the UAB. <coughs> uh, I, the title uh, is really respectful of what I am thinking, that the, the understanding of the basis of aging and the and the longevity in humans is a, a task much more difficult than uh, we previously thought. Uh, let me start with uh, some words on the complexity of the aging process and some theoretical considerations. Uh, as you know, uh, aging is a mosaic uh, with a great variability where all uh, uh, the macromolecules, organelles, cells, organs uh, age at a different level. Uh, so this is a, a tremendous task to have a, a comprehensive idea of what is occurring uh, in our body. <coughs> so this is uh, the scenario, and the framework uh, here is uh, the major components, genetics, epigenetics, stochasticity, uh, and environment. I have no time to discuss more this very important uh, uh, slide. Uh, what I would like to say is that uh, uh, is also complex uh, aging because there is a continuous remodeling and that the phenotype of aged subject uh, uh, is very complex because it is uh, the result of, of the capability of the body to respond and to adapt. We are not simple machines. So we adapt to what? To the major driving force, which is uh, the unrepaired damages which occur at the level of macromolecules, cells, uh, and organs. These damages can signal, and so this uh, a remodeling start. And uh, uh, you see that I put these uh, uh, unexpected words uh, uh, that remodeling increase the robustness of our body. Uh, indeed, uh, this remodeling uh, uh, hypothesis that put, I put forward some years ago is based on uh, uh, and performed by fundamental biological responses such as DNA repair, apoptosis, and basically uh, immune response and inflammation play a basic role. These are all positive, are all physiological <coughs> mechanisms, but such response may turn detrimental in the post-reproductive period of life, which uh, is largely unpredicted by evolution. So this is uh, my theoretical setting. And the other point that I would like to stress is that robustness and frailty occurs concomitantly in aged bodies. Um, in uh, the robustness of a complex system, engineers tell us that the robustness of complex systems cannot be infinite and fully pervasive. And somewhere in the system there is always a hidden frailty. In our case, in our bodies, this is dictated by evolution. During the aging process, robustness and freight occur concomitantly. And uh, this is uh, just to, to let you understand what is my idea, is that the, uh, you lose complexity, you readapt uh, to the uh, damages, and you become uh, uh, more uh, robust. But at the same time, you accumulate not only robustness, but also freight. And you arrive to a point where all these uh, things are uh, uh, difficult to manage, and uh, you pass away. <clears throat> and this can change between uh, different individuals. The rate of this process can be different in different individuals. Uh, which are the, 
the, the proof that you become more robust and more frail. This is a major uh, proof because uh, from flies uh, to C. elegans to men uh, is, uh, is very well known that until age 80 or something like this in humans, uh, the um, uh, rate of <coughs> mortality increases uh, logarithmically. And this is described very well by the Gompers equation. But after age 80 or 85, the rate start uh, decelerate, and the people die less than expected. So in a way, they either were more robust in the beginning or became more robust as uh, I am, uh, I am uh, uh, speculating. Uh, the inflammation is, uh, uh, which develop with age and that, that I called, I suggested to call uh, inflammaging, uh, I like to stress that this hypothesis is evolutionary based because at that time I was working uh, on the immune system from invertebrate to vertebrates. You can also appreciate that uh, Maria, Maria De Luca is one of the co-authors and this is uh, one of my more uh, cited papers. Uh, uh, and um, because at that time we were very creative and we created also this, uh, this, uh, this word to describe uh, inflammation related to aging. And uh, the uh, major point is that uh, the diseases, uh, mo the most of the most important diseases of aging, which are uh, uh, listed here, uh, share an infl inflammatory pathogenesis. So uh, if we could solve or decrease uh, the rate of inflammation, we could uh, decrease uh, uh, the, uh, the, the incidence, not of a single disease, but uh, of a bunch of uh, the most important diseases. Uh, of course, uh, we think that the lifelong uh, antigenic load, starting in utero, and uh, which can continue for uh, the entire lifespan, uh, especially persistent infections, uh, can be a major component of inflammation, but uh, we suspect that, uh, that uh, now we have data uh, mostly from Ru Judy Campisi in, uh, in San Francisco uh, that uh, senescian cells uh, uh, have a pro-inflammatory phenotype and uh, they stop uh, cell cycle, so they are anti-cancer, but at the same time they produce enormous amount of pro-inflammatory cytokines in order to repair the damage at the tissue level. And in this sense, they participate and contribute to uh, inflammation. Uh, 